Episode 255, Insurance in Troubling Times. This is the Change Underground for the 3rd of May 2021. I'm your host, John Moore. Decarbonise the air, recarbonise the soil. If this last year has taught us anything, it has taught us this. People are both a great source of joy and an extreme source of frustration. While we've been through something that happened 100 years ago, there's no guarantee we'll come out of this pandemic and not have to worry for another 100 years. As the interface between humans and wilderness is continually expanding, the chances of other viruses arriving is increasing. Mrs Change Underground and I like to watch TV shows where people are moving house. It gives us ideas, things to think about, that sort of thing. I find my first thought on seeing these properties nowadays is could I do a lockdown there? I was looking at units, flats, apartments, depending on where you live, just prior to the outbreak. But they have been very quickly dropped from my searches. And think about this. The virus, while more virulent and deadly than the average flu, is really not that severe in the larger scheme of things. Ebola has a 50% average mortality rate, 90% in some areas, 30 in others. Imagine a virus transmissible prior to symptoms with that death rate and a truly nightmare situation comes to mind. As with all these things, the wealthy do better. They can afford to isolate, pay off governments to travel or find loopholes in quarantine arrangements to be in safer places. But what about the rest of us? Many people have been left in the position around the world of breaking curfews to find work and food or slowly starving to death at home, avoiding infection. And that's not a good place to be. There were many people doing quite nicely, thanks very much, before the pandemic who want to return to the way things were. Yet those who literally put their lives on the line will be expected to return to their social positions within society. Think nurses, grocery store workers, delivery drivers and so on. Of course, the once a week clapping that was initiated in many European countries as a mark of appreciation was indeed a gesture of thanks. But actually bumping up people's wages to reflect the importance of the work they do and did, not likely. I'm pretty sure I read the English National Health Service nurses are being offered, wait for it, a huge 1% pay increase. There will be trouble ahead socially, and I think we should prepare for it. Now, I am, despite all of this, an optimist. Doesn't hurt, though, to have a little insurance just in case. At the most basic level, we need to eat every day, usually three times, but we can survive on less. Growing at least some of our own food would seem to be a prudent thing to do. Again, taking a worst-case scenario, lots of foodstuffs provided all the required nutrients and can be jazzed up or down with herbs and spices. Well, the humble potato, when combined with dairy, does this, provides every nutritional thing we need. Now, your climate will have a say in this, but growing huge amounts of spuds is not a difficult thing. The problem is disease over time. Think of the Irish famine following the potato blight. Now, of course, that was made worse by grain continuing continuing to be exported to England whilst people starved in the name of, I might add, free trade. But that's a whole other podcast. We know about the blight. We can take steps to avoid its recurrence. The dairy part is both difficult and dead easy to deal with. The easy part is ultra-high temperature milk. Now, I know it tastes like crud, but in an emergency situation, it would suffice. Or, if you have the space, a goat, a sheep, or a cow would work. Podcast footnote. There is a thing called the potato diet. I, Mrs. Change Underground, one of her sisters and her brother-in-law, went on said diet a few years ago. Now, if you know me, you know I love spuds. To me, this was an adventure. How many different ways could I prepare potatoes? Because we would be eating them three meals a day. Which herbs, which spices, boiled, baked, sautéed, mashed, whole, and etc., and etc. 
After three days, I could feel some changes in the body. They seemed positive. But the others in the experiment were not happy. It seemed they saw the seven-day trial as a test to be endured rather than an adventure to be experienced. And so they stopped after those first three days. I kept going to day five because we had a, a whole lot of previously boiled spuds ready to be consumed. And then on the night of day five, steak was on the menu, so, you know, time to stop. The point is, if we are faced with a more deadly pandemic and need to completely isolate, we could survive on spuds and dairy. But the key would be mindset, as well as the availability and the ability to add a variety of flavours. End podcast footnote. Now this cupboard milk versus fresh raw milk split is the defining line in how the current pandemic has affected people. It might also point to a different future. Spuds and UHT milk are the urban suburban solution to avoiding starvation and staying out of the path of any more virulent pandemic. Fresh milk is the out of town solution. To see how much healthier the out of town solution is, think about how much your life has changed and how much it would have changed if you were living on a a few or even just a half an acre when the lockdowns rolled in. I'm in the fortunate position of already living out of town, so my life changed very little. The things we needed from the supermarket we clicked and collected, and the rest of the time we stayed home. Or Mrs Change Underground did. I was an essential worker at the time in the disability field. So I still attended work, even though the clients weren't there, so I potted around on the gardens on my own. And then I delivered harvest to the residential side of the business, but again, didn't have to come into contact with other people. Should the worst happen in the future, I would not like to be living in a unit in an urban setting. With a 50% mortality rate, or even 10%, supply chains would be severely disrupted. So now is the time to start growing some of your own food. Maybe not the full-on spuds and dairy approach, but certainly lots of leafy greens, roots and fruits would be a fine way to go. I mentioned the spuds and dairy to point out that we can make do with very little variation, not that we should live that way. While the pandemic continues to run its course around the world, those of us in the fortunate position of being in safe places at the moment, should think about building some insurance now. Quickest and easiest way to buy ourselves a little breathing room is to stockpile dry goods. Not 10,000 rolls of toilet paper, obviously, but some grains, pulses and so on. And of course, to start gardens. Now, as we get better at the gardening, which we do over time, we can support not just ourselves, but those around us. As the sainted Bill Mollison pointed out decades ago, we only need 10% of us to move from consumption to production and we can turn the planet around. A sobering thought and a far better idea than returning to the mindlessness many were feeling prior to the great slowdown. If we have our basic needs met as we enter any future lockdowns, imagine what we can create. During the 1665 plague, Isaac Newton came up with calculus, optics and gravity, using a quill and paper, as well as his mind. We can solve so many more things nowadays with the interconnectedness we have and our knowledge base. So plant a garden, change the world. Simple, really. If you have any questions, thoughts or suggestions, I opened a Facebook group a little while back, imaginatively called... The Change Underground podcast group. You can search for that on Facebook where there's a link in the show notes and in the transcript over at uh, worldorganicnews.com forward slash episode 255. I wonder do we need to say forward slash anymore. Anyway, so let's build some insurance as we decarbonise the air and recarbonise the soil. Thank you all for listening and I'll be back next week.